This podcast of This American Life is supported by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it easy to create a website, portfolio, or online store. With modern templates and simple drag-and-drop tools, you can create a professional website in minutes. For a free trial, visit squarespace.com slash American. Hi, everybody. I'm speaking to you today from the stage of an opera house at the Brooklyn Academy of Music in New York City. A warning to listeners that there is mild cursing throughout this hour and on the podcast. We're not going to beep that. And I'm here on an opera house stage with a story that is so small, it almost feels wrong to tell it in a room this grand. It's actually about a real opera singer, not a super famous opera singer or anything like that. Parn Guilfrey makes about half of her living singing. The other half, she makes recording audiobooks. And about a year ago, she was staying at a hotel, and she had a deadline on this children's book that she was supposed to be recording, and the hotel room was kind of noisy. She was hearing a lot of noise from the street. And so she looked around for a quiet place, and she went into the closet, put pillows all around to deaden the sound, sat on the floor with a microphone, and then the cord of the microphone uh, went under the door of the closet out to her laptop, because her laptop had a fan that made noise. And so she closes the door, so it's pitch dark, except for the light from her iPad, which had the text of the book that she was supposed to read. And she began. The Exciting Exploits of an Effervescent Elf. Written by Trisha Sugarek and narrated by Karin Guilfrey. Chapter 1. Where is Emma? The enchanted forest was deep and green and splashed with... Can I just say, wouldn't it be incredible if I just now played you the entire audiobook? <laughs> <laughs> you paid like 85 bucks for those seats, right? <laughs> Actually, I can't play you the whole audio book because Karen gets exactly like two and a half sentences into this book and she stumbles on a word and she decides, oh, wait, I'll just, I'll just start again. I'll just start from the beginning. So she gets up to go out of the closet and start the tape again, start the recording again. And uh, she tries to get out of the closet. Oh, and she discovers that she's locked in. <laughs> God. <laughs> Seriously. The guard told me at first she thought, like, this isn't going to be that hard, right? After all, she has the iPad, there's Wi Fi, she could call the front desk on Skype, right? But there was a problem. This Wi Fi was like half of one bar, and it kept just cutting out. But I found the hotel number. This, of course, is on the recording 212 661 9600. I dialed it. Thank you for calling the Roosevelt Hotel. Please listen carefully to the following options. For additional information about the hotel, please visit our website. And then, of course, it's like the longest hotel phone menu ever. For sales and catering services, press 3. For accounting, press 4. For the Human Resources Office, press 5. And I'm like trying to press zero to get to the operator. And I'm thinking the Wi-Fi is going to cut out at any moment. So I'm listening to like this giant long menu. And finally I hear... If at any time you wish to speak to an operator, press eight. So I press eight. Reservations, may I speak and may I assist you? Hi, I'm actually in room 1136. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? After that, there's seven minutes of silence on the recording, just like total silence. Nothing happens except every now and then, Karen just laughs to herself. <laughs> that happens one minute and 48 seconds after the phone call. Then it's quiet, there's no other sound for 44 seconds, and then on the recording you hear... <laughs> now and then she tries the door handle again thinking she told me later, you know, this can't really be true. Like, this can't, there's got to be a way this is going to work. One wall of the closet has the hallway on the other side, and 18 minutes after Karen locks herself in, she hears people. She hears some German tourists <laughs> walking towards her down the hall. And fortunately, she actually has the skills for this very situation. Hello, können Sie mich helfen? <laughs> Can someone help me? 
The Germans come to the door of the room. They whisper to each other for a little bit. And then they do nothing. Hello? <laughs> her husband is out on an audition. He's also a singer. And his phone was turned off. She texts her mom. Here's nothing back. She phones her mom, and right then, somebody taps on the door of the hotel room and calls through it. Are you okay? Yes, please come in. <laughs> Can you come to the door, the person asks. I can't. I'm, I'm stuck in the closet. <laughs> Whoa. In the closet right here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm an audiobook narrator, and I was trying to narrate a book. <laughs> Karen knows it's a really weird thing to say to somebody as you're getting rescued, but she just couldn't help herself. Nobody wants to look like a nut, you know? Apparently, the Germans went and they found this very sweet Jamaican housekeeper, and 22 minutes after Karen was locked in, the housekeeper set her free. God, I was so happy to see her. And she was so nice. Oh, my gosh. She was so nice. I know this is a weird question, but, like, is it appropriate to tip in a situation like that? <laughs> I didn't think of it then. Now, Karen, remember, is she's, she's an opera singer, right? And operas are all about spectacle. You know, it's 80 people on the stage and horses and love and vengeance and big, grand feelings. It, was really, it would really be hard to get further from that to what happened to her in that closet, right? Where all the action takes place in a space not much bigger than your body. It is the simplest plot imaginable. There's literally no movement in this plot. If someone were to stage this as an opera... How would that go? <laughs> um, it might be minimalist music, actually. Oh, right. Like just a repeating theme over and over and over again with me yelling help. And, you know, people say those kinds of things in interviews, and then I'll put that quote at the end of the story, and it makes for a nice ending, put a little plinky music under it, and maybe you've heard our show. But when we did this interview, like, three or four weeks ago, I realized, oh, wait a second, for once in my life, I don't have to let this story stop here. I am actually going to be in an opera house very soon. I can reach higher with this. I can take this to the next logical step, the step it never gets you, the step you need an opera house for. <laughs> and it turns out I actually have a hookup for the kind of music that Karin is talking about. Some of you may know this. I have a cousin. His name is Philip Glass. <laughs> he is... Um, written a number of minimalist operas. <laughs> They've been performed here on this very stage since the 1980s, right, stand on the beach just this past fall. And so I called Philip, and he sat down to write. And so today, right now, I am pleased to present here on the Brooklyn Academy of Music Opera House stage, <laughs> the world premiere of his latest opera. I am not joking. This opera is called Help. Commissioned for our program today on the BAM Opera House stage. His work is played by orchestras all over the world. Please welcome Philip Glass. Had to perform this with him, Jonathan Dinklage on violin, Emily Browser on cello, and of course, the woman this is all about, Karen Guilfrey, mezzo-soprano. Karen?
Not a super famous opera singer or anything like that. Karen Guilfrey makes about half of her living singing. The other half, she makes recording audiobooks. And about a year ago, she was staying at a hotel. And she had a deadline on this children's book that she was supposed to be recording. And the hotel room was kind of noisy. She was hearing a lot of noise from the street. And so she looked around for a quiet place, and she went into the closet, put pillows all around to deaden the sound, sat on the floor with microphone. This podcast of This American Life is supported by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it easy to create a website, portfolio, or online store. With modern templates and simple drag-and-drop tools, you can create a professional website in minutes. For a free trial, visit squarespace.com slash American. Hi, everybody. I'm speaking to you today from the stage of an opera house at the Brooklyn Academy of Music in New York City. <laughs> a warning to listeners that there is mild cursing throughout this hour and on the podcast. We're not going to beep that. And I'm here on an opera house stage with a story that is so small, it almost feels wrong to tell it in a room this grand. It's actually about a real opera singer.